This is the Garden of English. I'm Tim Freitas, and today we're going to finish up our synthesis set of videos by looking at how to create a synthesis conclusion. And really what we're going to do is we're going to try to give an argument a face. So you're going to want to check it out. As we begin this video, I want to stop for just a moment and just give a little pause and give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. You can see their list of names, which is right up here, right? And we are extremely grateful at the Garden of English for the support that is offered through them uh, because that helps us to actually continue growing. If you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, uh, please note you can just go to that link right down below and see what's offered there, or you can watch this video right up here. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, we're going to get into this synthesis video here. Um, and um, as we do, what I'd like to do is I would like to just go through some steps about writing conclusions for synthesis because although I think the conclusion process is typically and almost always the same and that is leave a glass slipper for your Prince Charming. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out my other videos about it, uh, which you can find in my uh, argument and my rhetorical analysis um, and literary analysis and literary argument um, playlist, which you can all find up here um, and on our channel site, right? It's always about leaving that glass slipper. However, with synthesis, I encourage students to do it just a little bit differently, um, and here's why. We have the academic argument of synthesis where we've got sources and we're going through the whole thing, um, but what I encourage students to do is I encourage students to try to connect with the topic at hand, even if they don't think they can. Um, find a way to connect with the topic at hand and the conclusion to tell a story that's emotional and poignant, but also logically related that can allow us to see or allow the reader to see that they can connect to these things that are happening around the world and still call people to action or leave people with this kind of deeper understanding of what went on, okay? And really what we're doing is we're trying to give an argument a face. And the reason why it's important to do it this way is because, you know, I think about like ASPCA commercials or, or most charity commercials, right, where people can ask for donations, but it's much more applicable to ask, I mean, to get the donation um, when when something is actually shown about the need of whatever we're donating to. So an ASPCA commercial, right? Uh, people are like, hey, will you donate some money for you know the puppies, right? I, I'm kind of inclined not to do it. But all of a sudden I see this abused animal behind the cage or something like that, and I'm like, oh man, my heart is kind of wrenching. And I'm like, oh my word, my money might actually be able to help with that. And it becomes a logical progression that I can donate and I can actually help with something else. But it was that a mix of the emotion and the logic that really creates something impactful and then a movement from me as the audience member. So we wanna actually try to do that with our conclusions here. And I have some steps to do so. I'm going to shrink up right up here, and I'm going to go through these steps with you. How do we actually give the argument a face and make it emotional? And even if you don't think that you are able to tie into a particular topic because it seems a little bit like, um, you know, that's not very personal or I have had no experience with it, I think that, I think that you can actually see that you can connect to just about anything. But anyway, I actually just explain up here why I do things the way I do. This document is found right down below. Um, you can access that in the, um, in the conclusion. Now, I have to admit, though, that my conclusion here, um, I know that my body paragraph example and my thesis examples and you know, um, whatnot, sorry, my body paragraphing example is kind of like pro-horror film. I have to admit that I, I don't like horror films, and I decided that when I wrote this conclusion, I wanted to write it from the perspective of if my argument were about not thinking that horror films were appropriate. So uh, because of that, you've seen me waver back and forth with different examples, but that's just to show you that it's okay to actually argue from another side or another perspective. But at the end of the day, right, I don't like them, so I decided that when I wrote my conclusion for my example, I was going to kind of go there, all right? But what do we want to do, all right? So the first thing that we want to do is the same thing that I do in every conclusion tutorial that I ever give, and that is I want to identify ideas that my paper relates to um, and when I do so, I want to just be able to get those down on my mind or I know it says don't write these down right here. I'm going to delete that. You want to just write them down in the margins of whatever your planning paper is. What are some key ideas that your paper relates to? Now, what's really nice is that if you do the argue ideas and not things element that's brought up in my planning uh, for synthesis in the video that you can find up 
here, okay, um, if you actually were to do that, you've got a bunch of ideas. And whatever ideas you may not have touched upon in your paper, you can now bring these into your conclusion and try to get some kind of a call to action out of it. But anyway, what I decided to do here is I decided to put more than three. I actually listed a bunch. And three is just, two to three is just like, hey, let's do this quickly. But you can go up to five, seven, it doesn't matter. So what I decided was if I'm writing this paper about horror, I'm talking about these ideas, fear, maturity, thrill, suspense, danger, entertainment, safety, and reality. If I wanted to, I could actually put reality slash fiction, so I will right now, fiction. Uh, and the reason why is because I just want to make sure that, um, you know, I, I, I cover all my bases. So once I actually have these ideas, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to now just write a sentence that connects these ideas. Look at my step two. This is what changes from every other conclusion that I've ever put in any video. And that is step two for synthesis it says, think about a personal experience that holds some emotional and logical weight in relation to the argument at hand. And now this is where we start saying, okay, what is my experience? Now you might say, you might get a prompt like eminent domain or something, and you might say to yourself, I've got no experience with that. Yes, that might be true, but have you ever had experience with what you would consider an authoritative takeover for the benefit of somebody else? If that's the case, then we could actually connect with these ideas as we start trying to see how we fit into the idea that's being argued anyway. So anyway, I thought about it and I realized that I used to watch Hitchcock movies uh, as a kid with my family and uh, my favorite was Rear Window. Okay, so my favorite Hitchcock movie was Rear Window. I loved the thrill of that time. I loved the bonding that I had with my family. But um, I also noticed that when I got older um, and the horror movies got more gruesome, um, that didn't really become entertainment for me. In fact, I... Began, I became like grossed out as things got more and more real. So that's just right there is my personal experience. Now this right here is not what I'm putting in my conclusion. These are just my thoughts to begin, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is now that I've got a story and I've got the ideas, now I'm gonna start building them into my conclusion, okay? And what happens here is I start with step three. So step three says generate a sentence that establishes a relationship between the ideas from step one and the experience of your life from step two, because this is going to be the first sentence of your conclusion. So here's how my conclusion is going to start. It's going to say, some of my fondest memories are about the times when my family would go to the local video store, well before streaming services, and pick out a few, a few Hitchcock films. Yes, we used to do this as a family consistently when I was younger. So that's the first thing that we do, start telling the story. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to now, after highlighting our role in relation to the topic that the paper explores, we're gonna finish our story and then move the paper towards a universally applicable model that will make the audience respond in some way, um, or uh, not only respond in some way, but maybe even uh, you know consider something greater, actually do some physical call to action. One thing I will tell you though, is that you are not allowed to ask a rhetorical question. That is the worst way to get someone to respond um, at it, the end of a conclusion. So we're gonna finish our story and then we're gonna make it into something more universal that creates a response for our audience member. And so what that means here is this. I have my first sentence and then I'm going to add what we're going to see right here. We're gonna channel our inner Cinderella. We're gonna leave a, gas, a glass slipper and we're gonna create our final conclusion. And so I'm gonna make that right here as well where we put both of these together. But let's watch how I do this. So I just recounted how my, I have fond memories of going to the, uh, to the video store um, and with my family and we would get the Hitchcock films. Now let's actually tell the story and make it into something universal that you need to respond to. So here we go. We would then go home, make snacks, get drinks, and all experience the suspense and drama together. No matter how thrilling the movie was, I knew I was safe. So I got to experience the best sides of human emotions, all right? The full spectrum of human emotion, the thrill, the scare, and the safety and the love, right? However, as I got older and the movies grew more, uh, sorry, grew continually more violent and supernaturally dark, even though I would view them with my friends, I realized that the stain of the thrill wasn't comforted by those who surrounded me or by the idea that all of it was fake. As I became more aware of this, I eventually came to terms with the fact that I didn't need to consume such media to help me cope 
with real life problems because that's what my friends and family were for. And notice how that conclusion brings everything to that final point where it's my paper would have been, hey, horror movies are not the best. I then recount my experience and then I have this greater understanding that it's not the horror film that's helping me cope with life. It's my friends and my family and I didn't need the entertainment for that. That is that glass slipper. So I start by telling the story, I then move through it, and then I make it universal. Now you might say, yeah, but this is still about you because it says me. However, think about this, right? This is now becoming a consideration for anybody reading this prompt. Oh my word, maybe the coping with these dark elements of life, maybe my friends and family are supposed to do that for me too. And now we have a more emotional connection and a logical response, I mean, as with a logical example, and we really get... Um, you know, a fully synthetic approach to synthesis. Why? Because we've already built the paragraphs and included quotes from other people and put them in conversation. So we've got a synthetic argument and now we put ourselves fully into this. We've put the example right there and now we've left people with something highly emotional, highly logical and really considerate uh, to the point where it's like, wow, maybe it's not the entertainment. Maybe it's the family and the friends that we should care about even more, right? And then that's something to really consider. And that, once again, is our glass slipper. That's what we want to do. We want to think about conclusions that way. So I do have right down here, here's the final conclusion with that first sentence that begins the story and then goes all the way through. It's incredibly moving. Um, and this is really a, a, a genuine way to finish synthesis to make sure that you not only synthesize your argument, but yourself into your argument uh, in a way that is quite meaningful. Before we sign off here, I want to just give one more example. If you go to my website, you'll notice that there's another holiday packet um, for a synthesis prompt, and it talks about the meaning of the holiday season, which would be from Thanksgiving to New Year's. And a few years ago, I had a student that argued that the meaning of the holiday season is about family. Um, and um, she did this beautiful job writing her paper, and it's completely academic, and it's well-supported. It's a nice argument. But then when I got to her conclusion, it started with, with a line that said something like this, right? This year, when we put up our Christmas tree, there was a, one particular ornament that I looked at and, uh, and considered the most. It was the one that my grandmother gave me last year before she had died. And every time I sit down and I look at that ornament on my Christmas tree this year, it doesn't just make me sad. It actually reminds me that the best gifts in life are actually people. And I cherish the memories that I got to make with her around past Christmas trees when she was actually able to give me those types of gifts. I mean, if that's not a moving uh, and enriching conclusion, I don't know what is. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, my word, my family. You know, as the tears well up in my own eyes, I'm like, oh, I want to cherish them this holiday season. And that's what I'm moved to do from hearing that story. And that's why we actually want to do this. So uh, if this video was helpful, I'm going to click that you uh, ask that you <laughs> I'm going to click that you I'm going to ask that you click like and subscribe. Uh, because that's the easiest way to help the garden grow. Um, there are also a bunch of affiliate links down below, whether you need um, you know, help understanding content and studying. We have a textbook that I co-authored down there for that. Um, there are you know, um, assessment practices that you can actually check out with applied practice down below. And there's actually a link to the Parway Universe. Um, and that actually has review stuff that the Garden of English itself has created. I've been making those with Lauren Peterson. And actually, uh, we're going to have a couple other people helping us out with that very soon. Um, and people that many of you probably even care about, and we'll reveal that when the time comes. Uh, but anyway, there are other links down there for Garden of English merch, posters, t-shirts, things like that. And truthfully, um, if you don't want to actually support us in any of those ways at all, that's fine, because these videos are indeed quite free. We are on uh, Facebook. We are on Instagram. We ask that you check us out there. Follow us, th follow us there. And um, you'll then be able to know when our new videos come out. So until our next video, you all have a great one. <laughs>